Well, what's going on reef builders? I'm Jake Adams and as promised, we have the long awaited showcase of our other peninsula tank here at the reef builder studio. This tank is going to be four years old in a handful of months. I guess that makes it about three and a half years right now. Um, but we started out this tank trying to do a really monopora dominated aquarium and we did succeed. Um, but some uh, monopora eating nudibranch kind of gave us a curveball. So we started shifting over the population to include a lot more acros. And uh, as you can see, the stony coral growth in this tank is really, really excellent. So thanks for joining us on this video and we're gonna dive into everything about this tank, what's inside and what makes it work. So this is the, one of the first reef tanks we started featuring here at the Reef Builder Studio because this was the first full-on reef display that we actually set up. So this is a five-foot Red Sea Peninsula Aquarium. And just like we discussed in our previous Peninsula Showcase, uh, where this tank is really aquascaped to be enjoyed from both sides. Um, but before we get into what is inside the aquarium, I want to tell you a bit about what's running the aquarium. Um, most notably, just like the other tank, there's just an unobstructed field of view as far as uh, uh, no equipment, no nozzles, no tubing for almost all of the tank and all the equipment is pushed to one side. Um, this particular aquarium is running a pair of uh, the larger Red Sea Reef Waves and we have those on an alternating gyre just like the other one. Um, so the water flows one way and spins the water in one direction uh, for about five minutes and then it spins the other direction. Um, we get a lot of questions about these lights right here. These are the Acro Optics uh, LED lights that are made in Boulder, Colorado. They're kind of a small batch light and this particular generation has a full color touchscreen on it. And um, I use the app maybe once a year to kind of tweak uh, the spectrum or uh, just change daylight savings time. Um, but we use the touchscreen quite often because there is nothing faster for accessing the controls um, of setting the lighting to what we want, such as when we're shooting like right now so this is a fantastic pair of led lights i want to say they're about 300 watts each so we have about 600 watts um, over the whole tank but it's a giant panel of led light that really fills this entire aquarium um, and gives us a really cool uh, color spectrum because this is one of the first displays we set up here at the studio, um, this has been a test bed. So you guys might be very familiar with what's, what's underneath the sump, um, but we're using a lot of Red Sea native aquarium products. We got the Red Sea Reefer protein skimmer. Um, we have the new Red Sea Reef mat. This is the RS1200. I think we're getting about three months a roll on this thing, um, about ready to change one more time. And back behind there, there's a Kalkwasser reactor. Um, so super simple open clean sump we do wipe it down periodically uh, to try to keep it really clean especially when we're showcasing a new piece of equipment um, one thing that we did do to the reefer skimmer is we added the uh, newer uh, CJ PSK 1200 SDC so this is essentially the same pump that was on that protein skimmer but a controllable version from CJ and here you can see the two reef wave controllers this is a controller for the max spec jump pump that we use to return the water flow to the aquarium. And uh, we're using the Red Sea Reef Dose uh, four channel to dose calcium, buffer, magnesium, and a separate reservoir of AcroPower. So um, nothing really tricky, very similarly to the other aquarium. Um, we're dosing nitrates and phosphates, uh, Reef Energy AB plus, uh, plus the AcroPower, and uh, really just kind of keep an eye on the nitrates and phosphates and make sure they don't bottom out. Calcium is usually around 400 to 420 uh, alkalinity rides about seven or nine dkh and uh, magnesium is a little bit more important for the monoporas uh, it's a stony coral species that's uh, definitely sensitive to lower levels of magnesium so we try to keep it about 1300 plus in this tank the fish population in this aquarium is very similar to almost all of our reef tanks. We've got a lot of surgeon fish, um, but this tank has always had a few more of the little fish. So we've got four of the azure damsels that have been in here since the beginning, uh, some firefish, and one of the most recent additions is the uh, yellow chorus wrasse. I've always loved those guys um, just because there's a nice small splash of color, and I have no proof, 
but once we added him to this aquarium, we started having a little bit less uh, noticeable uh, grazing by the monopore eating nudibranch. So that is not a thing, it's just an observation we've made, so take that for it, uh, what you will. Um, I will mention before I was, you guys put that in the comments that we have had some challenges with the zebrasomas uh, exhibiting a little bit of recession to their fins. Um, once again, I don't know why the purple tang is totally fine, the tomini is totally fine, and the yellow tang looks like he's getting beat up, but he's not. There's not any aggression in this aquarium, and uh, the only thing I have to go on maybe is that there's so many corals in here that they're actually starving the fish for trace elements. That's my only working theory, and uh, yeah, that's what we can do about the fish, but the core population is really, really thriving, so let me tell you about those. you'll see the, you know some of the biggest coral colonies in here are the Montipora. So we've got a nice Montipora setosa here. Um, this is a Malampaya uh, Montipora, a different species of branching Montipora that I collected in Solomon Islands. This is your classic bubblegum forest fire uh, digitata. Um, <laughs> and one thing that I've always struggled with is uh, Superman Montipora. So this is a Superman Montipora. It's not blue, doesn't have red polyps. It just grows and encrusts and we're having a little bit of an issue right here where it's uh, encroaching on the setosa with its brownness. So we're gonna figure out a way to kind of kill it back and let the setosa regain that territory or just put a different coral uh, on top of there. Um, but like a lot of our other tanks, we have oddball corals kind of stuck around. So here we have a couple alveoporas that have been doing really well and growing for a long time. Those guys were really small when we got them. Um, there's a candy coral here, a moon coral here, Australian torch. Um, this is one of the first species we added to the tank. It's a, a local strain called the Herlock Ganyapora. It's a species of Bernard Pora that has encrusted and uh, mounted this rock down onto the bottom of the tank. Um, and we've got some pipe organ. But one thing you'll see with the kind of the motif of the acros is there's a few staghorns. So we've got a really nice blue hoaxamai here with just a blue thin branching staghorn that you see in some of our tanks. Um, this is the immortal tort. This is the only coral that's giving me a little bit of trouble right now and it never has. Um, and I don't know what happened, but but this coral should be really purple with you know brighter blue growing tips. And um, about two months ago, it just randomly turned brown with the tips still growing. So the tips are still growing, but the rest of the colony is not in awesome shape. And we haven't added any acros to this tank. So I'm 99.9% .9 confident that it's not parasites. But on the flip side, we do have a lot of deep water and bottle brush style acros. Um, I struggle to keep up with the names, so I just call them different dragons. So here we have the blue dragon, we got the blue tip green dragon. Um, I call this one the space dragon because at night when uh, the lights are definitely blue, you don't really see the coral, you just see every single little green uh, polyp. And then this is the red space dragon. So very similar color motif between this coral and this coral, um, but this one's a little bit more red with yellow tips. This one's a little bit more blue lavender towards the tips with uh, green um, axial tips. And then if you'll follow me around, I'll show you some more. One thing that you can do with peninsula tanks that you can't do with a lot of other tanks is create this really awesome deep field view of the entire aquarium. And you'll see like, you know, there's a lot of coral action here, there's virtually nowhere to put corals. Um, this is the pipe organ that we're still trying to beat back. This whole rock right here was a pipe organ in the early days of the aquarium. Um, but right now this has become the nursery for some loconi. I think this is a Jason Fox green mango. This is a classic um, bottle Ali Acropora speciosa that was grown from a, a small colony and you can see like we basically don't have any room left to run the algae magnet so I need to either find another space for it or kind of cut it down. So we'll probably cut that down to something a little bit smaller especially now that we've got it documented and um, as you come around, this whole balmy is just coral on top of coral on top of coral, and we've just kind of let it go and do its thing. This is the what I call the Heaven's Gate. He's getting a little bit shaded to there towards the edge, so I want to move this purple space dragon. Um, and you see, this is just just a nice dense you know, concentration of corals, but we're at that point now where we're going to need to do some fragging, otherwise, just a few corals are going to take over. And um, this balmy 
very well set. This Bami over here, um, this is the one I want to do a little bit more work on because we have just such a huge red coral. Um, there was a crystal experiment, green monopora right there, that had just grown so big, um, it was self-shading itself from the water flow and catching some, a lot of detritus over months and months and months. It was just built up inside. And um, I decided just to pull the whole thing and let the pieces that are in the Satosa kind of grow back because it is a really fast grower. Um, when it wants to be. Uh, one thing that I'm a little bit disappointed at is, is a big blue squamosa clam right down in there. And he was one of the founding member, uh, founding animals of this reef tank. He was about this big when I got him. And um, just don't really get to see him uh, as much as I'd like to. So definitely want to figure something out to pull that guy out probably out of the aquarium I feel bad but uh, we have so much coral in here there's just not any room for him left especially just like right in the light there's room in some shaded areas but probably be better and nicer to that coral to uh I'm sorry to that clam to put it in a much better environment and then over here you see it just keeps going we've got two different bernard poras um a couple branching cyphastrias so this is the same branching cyphastria that i showed you in the other tank in our flagship aquarium it's a green, uh, it's a green cyphaster with, with red polyps, but you can see here in less light and less flow, it's got a much more attractive branching shape and a much better color definition. Um, what else? This is the TNT, sorry, not, that's not the TNT, that's the Manila Spy Monopora. And uh, we've got some uh, Monopora Spongodi. So yeah, just a really nice selection of corals in this tank and uh, really glad that we could be able to bring it to you. So cameraman Evan pointed out that I didn't mention his Monopora capitata. Um, this is a coral that also was one of the first ones in this aquarium, and it was uh, very resilient to the acro-eating flatworms. And it grew big tiers and big branches and like all the way down. We've already cut that guy back quite a lot, but thanks for bringing that one in, Evan. And uh, this is an example of what you, know, you can really observe when you let the corals truly grow out. So in this coral, we've seen the encrusting version version, we've seen the plating version, and now you can see it's kind of dominated by the branches. So I think, you know, in time, we're probably going to trim a lot of the branches and give them a chance to regrow because we know how fast it grows. This tank has been really, really fun to keep and to uh, look at every day. The only challenge that we really had was the Nudibranch um, eating some of our monoporas, and we've seen to be at a at a equilibrium position right now with uh, that particular coral pest. But thankfully, we don't have any real other pests. I think we have we have uh, manually targeted not more than like five Aptasia over four years and it's been probably about a year since I've seen Aptasia. So this is one of the few tanks that is just really coasting. I can't tell you how pivotal it is to have a reef tank that has just a minimum of coral pests, a minimum of reef pests, and we can spend more of our time, um, you know, nailing down the aquarium fundamentals. Um, besides the Immortal Tort uh, not being as blue as it should be, it's looking bluer than it has in recent weeks. Um, so hopefully he's just gonna, you know, I'll look in here one day and he's gonna be solid blue all over again, but the tips are growing, it's not receding, there's no diseases, polyp extension is passable. Um, but one thing that has made me really happy about this aquarium is the awesome coloration that we're getting, um, especially in the deep water style aquaporas. Once we started really keeping an eye on nitrates and phosphates, that made a huge difference in their growth. And it's one of those corals that, uh, you know, when you, when you first get them, especially maricultured imported, they're really on the light brown side. But if you give them some TLC, you can get a lot of colors from them. So I'm hoping to probably shift some of the population of this aquarium. Um, a little bit more towards the uh, deep water aquaporas in the future. Um, so thank you so much for joining us on this video. I hope you enjoyed it. This is a really awesome looking aquarium, another year of growth, and uh, it's just gonna be just bursting at the seams with large stony coral colonies. If you have any questions about this particular aquarium, the equipment we put on it or how we keep it, uh, make sure to pop those in the comments below. Um, this is you know, the kind of aquarium that we really strive to create here at the studio. So it's really um, our pleasure to be able to share it with you. So thanks again for being part of the Reef Builders community and we'll catch you guys in another video very soon.